It's Matthew Manhattas with Impact Outdoors. I'm making a short film here for everybody to see how we decoy crane here in the middle Rio Grande Valley. Um, we have all three subspecies here present in the middle Rio, which makes it a, an incredibly biodiverse situation for this hunt. Um, most locations in the world, you don't see all three at once. Um, so what we're doing is we're setting up our decoys. We have our layout over here, uh, guys getting ready. We're in a wheat field today. Um, our blinds were a little dark, so we're, we're cutting up wheat. We're really dressing the top of those blinds to match the hatch, per se, with the wheat. And if you look here, we have a, a small family unit, just a three, an oddball, because uh, that welcomes another, another bird to that flock. Also, you'll notice that none of these birds have their heads up. Um, we refer to the birds with their heads up as sentry birds. They're almost like blockers in basketball. So here, we do have a sentry. Here we do have a sentry, and what these do is they want to they wanna make eye contact, they want to assert dominance. Essentially, they tell them to hit the brakes. You will not fly past me, I'm eye to eye with you, and that's what we're doing here. So we got high heads on the back, some more high heads on the back, and why we've done that is because our row of blinds are right here. We're trying to suggest a landing zone where these three socks are. So we have our layouts here. We want to drag the birds across the blinds and suggest a landing right there. You'll also notice that there's about eight yards between each family unit. That is so that we actually do what cranes do. They stay in those units. They'll keep some distance between them. On a big feed, it's hard to tell. But when you're really trying to decoy these birds, it helps a lot to have isolated units, to use your sentries, and also use your, your head down feeders. So that, uh, so that those birds will know where to land. 